So I've been asked several times, um, how good are the Cal standards that you get with your nano DNA? Um, they look like this. So these came from some nano DNAs. This one had a, a silver top. This one had a, a brass top. But these are both 50 m loads. Um, and so that's typically that's typically what you'll get in your uh, in your kit when you buy the DNA. That you'll get a little 50 m load. The shorts and the opens, of course, are going to be fine. It's the 50 m loads that people are worried about. Um, so uh, I mentioned before, I have uh, some expensive loads. Uh, these are made by uh, InMet. They're not calibration standards, but I, I've had them swept to 18 gigahertz, and they're very, very good up to 18 gigahertz. So I kind of keep these as my as my references. As you know, cal kits can be thousands of dollars, so I have to be on the budget. So yeah, these these are supposed to be pretty good. Um, and then I've got a couple other things. One one notably is my um, load that I built myself. Uh, so some people might think, well, you built it yourself. It must not be very good. Um, it has a short open load on it. Um, so what I did was I created a little uh, uh, test fixture here. Let's see if I can if I can show that. Uh, it's uh, it's just a a connector. Is that going to focus? There we go. Uh, a connector, and then uh, I can add I can put my voltmeter on it. And I've set it up so I'm doing a four wire measurement. So people aren't familiar with that. It's it's a very very accurate way of measuring low ohmage. Um, that takes it. It takes out all of the uh, cable uh, problems, and so I did a four-wire measurement on a whole bunch of a whole bunch of devices. Uh, so uh, let me show you. Uh, let me show you my data here. Zoom back down on that. All right. So here's the. I have two inmets. Uh, one of them I have painted red because <laughs> it's my gold standard. So. Um, it measures 50.02 ohms. So out of all of these uh, measurements, it's the very best, okay? And then uh, this one is not all that good, actually. It's 50.8. So even though these work really, really well to 18 gigahertz, uh, where they start, so, you know, it's, you want it flat. They, they might be higher or lower, but you want them flat out, out to 18 gigahertz, and these are good to 18 gigahertz, but this one starts out a little high, 50.8. Uh, uh, I have my nano silver one. It has silver top. It's just a, uh, a thing. And it measured uh, 50.7. And the star is next to it because uh, the little pin <laughs> in the center pulled out. While I was doing these measurements, this little pin stayed in my connector and it pulled out of this thing. So it's no longer any good. So. Um, even though it was a reasonable value, it was it was the better of the two. Um, it, it, it has self-destructed, so it's no longer any good. So uh, that's one one thing you might be thinking about for your for your Cal standards. Make 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 sure they they don't break on you. Um, the little brass. So I'll put this one here. Um, the little brass one measured 51, so it's pretty bad. Um, now, why would it measure 51? Well, standard one percent resistors are 51 ohms. There's no 50 ohm resistor. You can build a 50 ohm resistor by having two 100 ohm resistors, but um, there is no standard 51 ohms off the shelf. Um, there's probably expensive 50 ohms, but not, you know, not the easy ones to get. I had a couple 30 dB pads. I had uh, this 30 dB pad, which is, is very, very high quality. This is Allen. And then I, I had another one, and these I know that these major are actually pretty good. Uh, this one I've painted red, and that's because it's very, very good. It's 50.1 ohms, so um, it's it's a very nice 50 ohms. Um, now, uh, the one that I built, I made out of 200 ohm resistors, so my mine major is 50.06, right? So it's right up there in league with the very best one I have. So the Cal standard that I built is very, very good for this. Um, and then I have a, uh, a five watt, uh, this is a Pasternak uh, a five watt load, I think. And um, it measures pretty good too. I, kn I know this one no known to be good, 50.285. So um, if you have some resistor or some uh, 50 ohm loads at home that you're not quite sure about or you want to test, the first thing to do is measure them at DC, okay? It doesn't tell you how they're going to operate at RF, but measure them at DC. Um, and uh, 
actually, they don't get any better or worse when you sweep them for frequency. It is kind of what it is. So if you measure them at DC, that's kind of how good they're going to be everywhere. <laughs> um, so, so how, so you're going to say, well, 51 has got to be terrible. That's going to be a terrible, terrible, um, uh, Cal factor. Um, if we, if we do this division, 51 divided by 50, um, that's equal to an, uh, one, 1.0, I can't draw, 1.02, this is the SWR, okay, so 1.02 SWR is actually really, 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 really good. So I was looking online uh, to buy some better Cal standards, and um, the best ones that I, I saw for sale um, said they were going to be uh, guaranteed to plus or minus, uh, I mean, uh, to, to 1.05 SWR. And you pay a lot of money for something this good, but we're looking for something much, much, much better. These, these 50.002, so 50.02 divided by 50, right? That's going to be a really small number, right? 50.00, oops, 50.022 divided by 50. Yeah, see, that's that's an SWR of 1.0004, right? This, this, is a, this is a perfect load. All right. So now that we kind of have these things uh, in a DC mode, right, DC, a DC calibration, um, let's go over to the VNA and, and, and take a look at them. Okay, so we're going to be sweeping between uh, 0.3 megahertz and 1300 megahertz, 1.3 gigahertz. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll do a fresh cal. Uh, All right, calibration complete. Um, let's zoom in and see how we're doing here. So, uh, so this is um, 45 ohms, 55 ohms. It's going a little further. 40 ohms. No. I want to go the other way. Here we go. 51 and 49, okay? So 51 ohms was kind of one of the worst ones we had. So let's put in another, let's put in that other um, inmet, which was what, 50.8, I think it was? Let's take a look at that. And uh, not only is it a little off, it's, it has a little bit of capacitance in it, okay? So it's, it's off a ways. All right, so let's take a look at the only, the only uh, nano VNA load I have left, the one with the uh, copper top, or brass top. Let's see how it does. And it's, uh, it's sort of over here around 51 ohms, so, you know, not so bad. Okay, so let's measure the, uh, the load here that I built. I had to put an adapter on it, so it might have a little bit of extra inductance or something on it, or it has some electrical length on it, let's say. Um, so there we go. So we're spot on right in the center, but it, then it has this capacitance on it. So um, I don't know exactly where that is all coming from, but uh, but it's very good. If you um, if you go out to a normal scale on the Smith chart, it's still a single dot, right? <laughs> All of the, all, every single one of these will be fine as a Cal standard. That's kind of the bottom line, that, you know, getting to the end. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're around 50 or 51 ohms, it's going to be fine. Uh, but let's zoom in again so we can see some, some funness. Um, so, yeah, so it starts out at low frequencies. Uh, let's turn a marker on here. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell where the marker is in all this mess. Yeah, I can't even I can't even tell where the marker is. Um, we can do it. We can do a, a linear sweep, and that we can probably see things. But anyway, um, let's put on our really really good load, the one that I painted red. It's I mean, uh, not load uh, attenuator. It's a 30 dB attenuator, and you can see that it's measuring very very nicely, right? Uh, and then let's put on the other one, which wasn't wasn't too bad. Not as good. And you can see it's got some capacitance in it. And, oops, uh, 
not good to drop these things. All right, and then the last one was this little uh, five watt jobber. It's a 30, uh, 30 dB as well. So you can look, see, it's, it would make a really, really nice Cal standard. Um, it has a very, very nice, uh, nice 50 ohms. Now let's go ahead and uh, put our original Cal back on, make sure things haven't drifted. And you can see that it has drifted a bit. This little ring here uh, happens. You need to warm your instrument up for half an hour and then that will go away. But um, I kind of ignore that little ring because it, it just kind of shows up um, if you haven't if you haven't cowled or if you haven't let it warm up enough. So kind of ignore that one. So there you go. Um, let's go ahead and do a linear a linear measurement. Let's change the format for this thing. We'll do a log mag. And we'll put back on the really effect. Let's uh, let's go ahead and calibrate. Before we do this, let's calibrate one more time. And there you go. We're uh, way way down here. So let's go ahead and oops. Let's leave this on here just for a second. Let's go ahead and change the reference level to let's say minus forty. Um, and we can see this, and we will put averaging on. What is our averaging set to? Uh, let's see here, average factor, let's average four. And we'll restart the average. So you can see that we're kind of, we're kind of around here at minus 60 dBm. Um, and if we go back to something like the brass the brass one that comes with your kit. Let's see how it does. And wow, what happened? I don't see anything at all here. Everything's okay. That's really weird. Is it worse than minus 40? Oh, because that's because I had the averaging on. I'm sorry. I'm gonna turn averaging off so it's uh won't it won't. There we go. There we go. All right, so yeah, so it's not as good. So let's go ahead and change our scale then. Reference level to minus 20. Yeah, so uh, this one is around minus 40 to minus 45. And our cal kit is way down here at minus 60, right? Tighten it up a little bit, yeah. That little bump there again is because the machine is drifting. So it's really good to warm these things up. I should have well it warm up before I did this video. Uh, let's go ahead and put on the nice red band, red band 30 dB one. Let's take a look at him. Yeah, he's really nice. He's down below minus 45. Very, very low here. Then it kicks up a little bit at the higher frequencies. And let's put on uh, the one that I built. Let's see how he's doing. Uh, so yeah, so he's really good down at the low and then, and then gets worse up at the high. So, um, probably better construction is necessary for really high frequency stuff. Um, still at minus 35 dBm, but certainly not as good as at the low end. Um, I don't, I don't know exactly. I, I believe it would do better trying to remove the, uh, effect of this coupler, uh, of the extension here. Um, but. That's what it is. Um, and then let's see, which one haven't we measured yet? This is the inmet that uh, isn't painted red. And so, yeah, it's at minus 40. Oh, well, so there you go. Gives you an idea of the uh, things that you'll get uh, in your uh, Chinese nano VNA. Um, there's certainly gonna be 51 ohms or lower. That's an SWR of 0.02. It's going to be just fine. That is if they don't break.